In this video, we are going to implement this abstraction to help the use case to get inventories by name. To do that, we will need to create a plugin because a plugin is plugged into our application, so it's replaceable. To demonstrate that, I want to create an in-memory plugin first, and then later we can replace that with another plugin that is made of Entity Framework Core. Because of that, I may have different plugins. So first of all, I need to create a folder. So I'm going to add a solution folder under the solution, and then I'm going to call it ms.pluginins. And this is a logical grouping. So there isn't a, actually a folder created. See, you can't see uh, the folder. So we will need to actually create this folder to correspond to that logical folder. I give it the same name as this logical folder here. And then under here, I'm going to create another project and it's going to be a class library as well. And the location is the plugin folder. The project name, I'm just going to call it ims.plugins.inmemory. Right, so later I can create another project and place it under the same folder, but I call it ims.plugins.efcore, right? Stands for Entity Framework Core. But for now, let's implement this uh, in-memory plugin. Another benefit of creating an in-memory plugin is that you can use it for testing to facilitate your test cases so that you can have a fixed set of data to test with uh, so that your data does not change, right? Because if you use database, uh, the data in the database will change over the time so which will make your use uh, your test cases fail but if you use an in-memory database that have a fixed set of data to start with so you always will have the same data to work with so in this in-memory plugin here I, i'm going to have a inventory repository right and this will implement the i inventory repository interface in the use case layer so that's why I need to add a dependency here, right? A project dependency to the use cases layer. So this reflects the clean architecture where you saw that the data store layer, which is outside ring, is dependent on the use case layer, as opposed to the other way around. And then I'm going to do control dot to import the, the namespace and do another control dot to implement the interface. Right, right now I only have this one method here. So then here I'm going to hard code uh, some data here for a list of existing inventories. Okay, so I'm going to call it inventories. The inventories will be populated with some data. So now it's the time to give our inventory some field in order to initialize the inventory list with a list of inventories. So then to do that, we can go to our core business layer. We can add some property in here. So of course, inventory class will have an inventory ID, and then we will have a, a inventory name. Do we ever allow our inventory name to be now? No, because of that, I'm not going to put a question mark here, right? I'm going to initialize it with empty string. So this is something new in .NET 6, which is called nullable reference type. We initialize it with an empty string so that we can uh, avoid the possibility of having null reference exceptions. Now we have the quantity property as well as the price of the inventory, basically basically the cost, right? And then we can go back and we can initialize something. So let's say we are producing bicycles, right? So let's call it bike. And for bike, what kind of parts do we have? 
where we have bike uh, seat. And let's say we have 10 already. And the price is, let's say, $2 as a cost, right? And then we will have bike body. And we also have 10. And bike body is, let's say, $15. And we also have bike wheels. Let's say we have 20. And then each cost $8. We will also have some bike pedals. Uh, we also have 20. And let's say each cost $1. Now we are going to implement this method and first we'll need to check whether the name that is passed in is null or white space. If it's null or white space, we are going to return everything. And here because we're using a task and also because we're using in memory, so we can use task dot from result. We can just make it async and then we do a wait. And if it's if the name is not empty or white space, then we really need to filter the list that we ha already have in here. And for that, we can use the inventories the where, and we can use uh, the inventory name that contains the name. And we are going to use uh, the ordinal ignore case parameter here. And this where method returns i enumerable, right? And that's what we want. So we implemented this abstraction. Therefore, this inventory repository class can be used as a plugin. Then how do we plug this into our use case? What we need to do here is that we need to register this interface and its implementation in the service collection in our Blazor application, which is this web application here. So for that, we can go to our program.cs. All of these are basically registering the services that are needed in all of these pipeline middlewares. We will do our dependency injection here, right? You can, you can see that we have this services collection here and we will need to add singleton. Later, I will explain what at singleton is but for now we are just adding a mapping between the interface and the actual implementation and then i'm going to do control dot to import the namespace here and of course we'll also need to add a project reference here to the in-memory plugin and after that control dot to import the namespace now inside our asp.net core blazer application we have this mapping. Therefore, whenever our use case is required by our Blazor application, ASP.NET Core will see that the use case requires this interface. Then it will go into the service collection to see whether there is any implementation for this interface. In this case, it sees that we did provide it this inventory repository concrete class. Therefore, it will instantiate an instance of this concrete class and provide it to this constructor of the use case. And then in the constructor, the variable inventory repository will receive instance of the concrete implementation of the object. So this completes the process of plugging. And in the next video, we are going to see how this use case is used in our Blazor application.